Our topic this week that's going to let us understand that complicated motion is angular momentum. Which is important because it is a conserved quantity. of rotational motion. And as you can imagine, it's similar to the translational momentum that we've already talked about. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about a disk, like this disk that's free to move, free to rotate on an axis. And I'm going to apply a torque to it to give it some acceleration and get it going. Then I'm just going to let it spin. And let's just remind ourselves, think about, and draw all the quantities that we've dealt with so far. So let's see, we've got the disk like that. We've got an axis of rotation like this. Let's see, I applied a force to it. So we applied a force like that along the side. So we know force is a vector because it has a direction. And that force was applied at some radius from the center. So that's our the vector r. And when you apply a force at a radius, that's what? That's a torque. And the direction of the torque, you actually define as up, like this. Right? r cross f is up. So the torque vector was like that. Now, when you apply a torque, you tend to make something rotate. And how much depends on the torque and the moment of inertia. So that's the one thing that is not a vector. The moment of inertia is kind of like the mass for rotation, 1 half for a disk, it's one half the mass times the radius squared. Okay. See, so we had a few other vectors. If you have a force at a radius, you apply a torque, you make it turn, you give it an angular acceleration, which we would also draw there. It also points up, uh, defined in the same way you define the torque. And when you do all this, you're making it rotate, so you're also giving it uh, an angular velocity. You're giving it omega. So also, I'll just draw that there as well. All three are basically on top of each other. The torque, the uh, angular acceleration, and the angular velocity. This is all what would be happening when you apply the torque. All right. So now, though, what I'm going to do is draw it again. Now we're just going to let it spin. So after I applied the torque, since the friction was low, it spun for a while. And it was spinning around that direction. And once it's just spinning, most of these vectors are gone. The one that remains is omega. It continues to turn. It still has um, an angular velocity. But what I'm going to draw is just the angular momentum, L. So once the disk is spinning, it has angular momentum, and it tends to retain its angular momentum. So L is simply the moment of inertia times omega. Just like the translational momentum is p, it is mass times velocity, this is basically the rotational version of that. Moment of inertia times uh, angular velocity. And uh, you can see then that just like all these, it's in the same direction. The angular momentum vector points up perpendicular to the plane of the rotation and along the axis of rotation in this case. Its actual direction. is one of those many right-hand rules that we use when we're describing rotations and circular motion. So in this case, you put your fingers, take your right hand, fingers go around the motion, and your thumb points in the direction of L. The units you can figure out from the formula, but it's in kilograms meters squared per second. It doesn't really have a special unit name. We don't really calculate L a lot uh, and talk about it, so we just call it kilogram meters per squared per second. But the most important thing um, is that the angular momentum is constant unless acted on by an external, and since this is rotational motion, torque rather than force. So when I have the disk here, it has zero angular momentum. I apply a torque. I give it some angular momentum. And now that angular momentum is constant. But actually, if we sit here long enough, it's slowing down. It's going down, down, down. It's eventually going to stop. So what's happening? 
friction, of course. Friction slows everything down. There's a friction in the bear there's frictional forces in the bearings, and they're pushing back. They're actually applying a torque, which is slowly uh, eventually going to make it stop. But if I had frictionless bearings, it would spin all day because angular momentum is conserved.